Hello, I'm Julio from IVF Daddies, and today we have a special guest. Hi, I'm Luisana. I'm from HBOT for Life. Hi, Luisana. How are you? Good. How is everything with you? It's great, great. So we're here in Ibiza, and um, I don't know if most of you know, but Ibiza is becoming a little bit of a wellness... Imperium. <laughs> like a wellness retreat, and now it's like a wear wellness empire. Um, yes. Uh, and what do you actually do? So, um, Agefoot for Life is a company that manufactures hyperbaric oxygen chambers. And we are, well, I'm the owner uh, with my husband. So we manufacture together this device, this medical device. So you manufacture for other people or you manufacture and you have your clients coming to you? Well, we do the manufacture. Uh, so basically we sell these chambers to patients, we sell the chambers to clinics, to hospitals, and we also treat people because we have our own clinic as well in here. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So you only have at the moment in Ibiza? And in the Netherlands as well. So what can, because I remember being in New York uh, and I used to use all these things. I was in the, like I have my infrared panels, I mm -hmm. love everything. I will, I'm obsessed with anything that has to do with longevity and and recovery uh, and so I tried the hyperbaric chambers but I've tried it for no reason I yeah just tried without it. a goal basically yeah, yeah no yes. goal. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any reasons to go and I was in my 20s mm -hmm. I mean and yeah you really feel refreshed that was the experience that I have as a memory so how would you say have changed from like years ago like five years ago to now to people that are using it to just feel refreshed or to be like a luxury um, item to something that will actually improve your health well let's start with basically hyperbaric oxygen therapy it is a medical treatment okay oh, so it yes treatment. it is a medical treatment so the only thing treatment. yes and um, so the only thing is that you can use it without having a medical condition because oxygen is like the fuel that your body needs to work better. So it doesn't mean that because you don't have a medical condition, you cannot get a benefit you know, from it. Because sometimes we are asymptomatic, like we don't feel that something is happening in our body. But actually, yes, our body is going forward with an illness that it might happen to when you are 50, 60, 70s. It was usually what happens with cancer. And exactly, exactly. So um, I always trust, you know, that it's better to prevent, you know, that something happens to you. And for me, oxygen therapy or hyperbaric oxygen therapy, it is one of the best ways to actually prevent and to put your body in such a state that you are free of a medical condition as long as you can okay so what so if, what would happen if i have no medical condition and i still have the machine and i still go to your sessions mm -hmm. because i enjoy the result okay well let's put it like this for example i don't have any medical conditions thanks god <laughs> and then basically you know every time that i go inside the chamber what i notice is that my skin looks amazing my nails grow a lot my hair as well i have a lot of energy Sometimes, you know, when I feel that I don't want to send that email, I don't want to talk with this person, I say okay, to myself... Like a burnout. Yeah, exactly. I go inside the chamber, I breathe oxygen, How you know, long? for an hour and a half, yes, wow. like 90 minutes, or sometimes I sleep a little bit in there, I take a nap or something like that. Then I get out of the chamber and you see me energized. Like oh I'm God. like cleaning the kitchen, like talking on the phone, you know, like that. I feel that boost of energy, you know, in my body. Oh my God. And also what we were saying a second ago that people don't believe you as an owner of a company because you look 12. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's also true, you know, because sometimes when I have to talk about experience, when I have to talk, yes, this is going to help you, they start, are you a doctor? Are you this? And then I'm like, no, I'm not a doctor, but I am hyperbaric specialist. You know, I've been a student this for the last five years. I am really, you know, like I know what I'm talking about. You know, and they are like, 
I feel that in their heads they are calculating, you know, how old, like how old I am, you know, like, like, like you yeah, like yes, sales, like a yeah. Lady yes. And then you know when I start saying, you know, that I also manage, you know, the business part of the business, you know, uh, it's also like well, you're I'm, lying to me. Yeah, because if, if like just if on the superficial side, if it's just like I can have the skin that you have, I will definitely be in the hyperbaric chamber. <laughs> yeah, but. The, the so what does it what does it take to be a hyperbaric specialist uh what is like how many years of uh study what is it so there are like different certifications okay there is the doctor that does uh as you are like a, a cardiologist for example you become a hyperbaric specialist you know like on a, or a hyperbaric doctor so for example here in Ibiza there is only one doctor that is a specialist in hyperbaric uh -huh. medicine and is the director of the Rosario Hospital. Um, then there is also courses, okay? In the United States, it's more advanced, the hyperbaric medicine, so you can find a lot of courses over there. So I did a very, very nice course with someone that has more, like, more than 17 years in the market, you know, for, for hyperbarics. And I did um, around one year and eight months course with him uh, with the, in the hyperbaric uh, oxygen uh, environment. And then since then, because all the amount of patients that I have, I mean, I mean like bas basically constant learning, you know, because when someone comes with a medical condition that maybe I don't understand, I'm the first one that I'm like checking all the medical studies to see what age bot can do for this person and especially because when people come to me is that is their last resource you know so what you're describing is basically what we face in the IVF podcast is uh, a lack of a lack of knowledge on certain aspects of, of the body and uh, it's almost like the medical industry works on a, a pyramid like on a structure mm -hmm. and then there's a lot of things like fertility egg count motherhood like uh your uh just your genetics that mm -hmm. you don't really what you were saying that they're you're asymptomatic and then a lot of people don't know anything about their fertility education or their infertility and when they come to the uh to us or to richard that works my boyfriend that works for um ivf uh then these people come as a last resource and they feel like they're broken or yeah. like they're not like women have been saying to their bodies like we're not gonna have a baby and then the moment that you say yes after you're taking like um contraceptive medicine or you're working you're adding stress and then now when you want to have a baby like it's not as easy i but that's nothing you, there's not a pain you don't feel it you don't like and then that's when they try to do everything they can but what is surprising to me is that people don't tell you do you want to check your egg counts when yeah. you're 18 to see 19 20 25 do you want to take well freeze your eggs so I'm assuming that that's kind of what you get with your clients. Yes, um, basically, just to try to mix, you know, like some uh, information from what you're saying and also from from what I, from what I know. Um, my patients, I have like patients, you know, like with very strong medical conditions or with maybe with auto autoimmune medical conditions that basically their medicine, um, there is a point that the traditional medicine stops, you know, that basically it reach a point that they say, okay, well, you can only take this pill and yeah, you will have pain for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, that's your life now. It's almost like they treat you, it's like a treatment medicine instead of like a healing medicine. Exactly. Yes. So then this person that has, let's say like, um, I had, a, I had a patient, just to tell you a little bit the story of this woman. She's from the United States. She came to us uh, maybe two years ago. And she, she used to have, well, she has, she has Lyme disease. Uh, and she used to have also an auto autoimmune disease also that was attacking her body. So the Lyme disease was attacking her body, you know, and then she, ha she also had a broken back, okay? So 
like some ligaments she could walk no problem but pain all the time when there is pain in your body it's because you have inflammation okay so that's the first reaction from your body is to tell you you have pain it means that you have inflammation so this woman cool then she was um, a brand manager like super successful in the united states she was working all the time on a laptop you know like working uh, from her laptop she couldn't sit anymore on front of her laptop and remember what she needed to do like her brain was in that stage shock of nervous system exactly yes and she came to us the treatment it is expensive you know and especially if you are not working it is expensive for you you know for 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 the patient and this is not covered uh, with a, like the medical insurance won't cover any medical conditions that is not FDA approved. So, so, so this would basically be like a aesthetic, out of her pocket. Of yes, her like, pocket. If like if it's aesthetic or get, something like, X. Um, so, and what, like, what does it take for it to be part of the FDA? Well, the FDA, unfortunate, only covers 14 medical conditions that are, for example, if you had a crush injury that something fell on you you know and you were crushed by something um, if you were on a fire and you inhale uh, carbon dioxide um, if you survive chemotherapy or they uh, and then your wound for example if they remove your breast and you your wound doesn't heal for for the hyperbaric chamber to be approved by yes. and covered yes exactly oh. so if you are telling me that my skin can heal some a tissue that cannot be regenerated anymore. Imagine what can do for your body for something Where mild. Something yes, for something mild that is wow. working. Yes. So well, to come back to the patient, she offered me, look, I cannot pay for the treatment, but I'm very good and building websites, you know, like with the brand and all this. What if, if when I feel better, if I feel better, I do your website and I'll do all your branding. I was like, okay, deal, because I also need a brand girl and I haven't hired anybody. So she started to do it, like, she did in total 56 sessions. At session number she 20, be, how many? 56. So at session more or less 20, she started working again wow. with me. She will sit in my house for five hours to talk about the branding, to talk about where, where, where all, our goals, That's all this, yes. And she left, well, she left me a note, you know, when she left back to the United States, saying that I saved her life, wow. you know, because she was really considering to end her life. That's amazing, the fact yes. that you can have something that, I mean, just to me to hear, first of all, that FDA approves for certain conditions, that means that they're giving you this type of approval. They just don't want to give you 100%. Yeah. So, like, they're because definitely saying that it works. And yes. then having somebody that went from, like, not being able to sit or work to... Mm -hmm. I mean, that first of all, for you to say yes, that means that you definitely believe in your... Of in course, your you know, like, so in that... Because, like, if you, somebody's that fried coming to me, I would be like, I don't know. Uh, really? Like. Okay, so let's say that people have not seen these hyperbaric chambers, uh, and they could think that that is like a x-ray machine mm -hmm. what would be how can you compare it or describe it it is a pressurized chamber you go inside and you will be breathing oxygen okay there are like different chambers in the market there are chambers that are like multi-seat basically you have like 14 like 10 people yes sitting beside you all of them hooked to a mask you know like breathing oxygen that's the future <laughs> well, like I will tell you something just like now uh, in a few. So um, then there is this mono place uh, chambers that you lay down by yourself and you breathe oxygen with a mask, or you can be pressurized with oxygen. Okay. Like in a bed. Exactly. Yeah, yes. Um, and then there are the soft chambers that are the chambers that the sport, the elite, you know, like the, the sport elite uh, players, they used to regenerate after a game, after uh, when they had an injury. That's the one that is like a zipper bag. Yes, you, you exactly. You can go, basically go in with your 
computer iPad and watch. Yeah, it. exactly that one. But that's is 1.3 ATA. That's mild hyperbatics. It's more for re regeneration. Okay, it's more mm -hmm. it's more for like uh, uh, for re like recovery of. Yes, yeah. exactly. So most of the studies are made in these huge uh, chambers. You know that they are in hospitals or in these big universities, and all of them are like 2.0, 2.2 ATA, which is more pressure. What is what what are the the ones that you use? Uh, medical chambers that are up to 3.0 ATA. So can you overdo it? Can no. You, like, can you get consequences by overdoing mm -hmm. hyperbaric chambers? Can you, like, is there a limit or...? You are coming already with a medical condition, okay? So you are coming with a goal. You want to improve or you want to regenerate your body to be able to uh, conceive, okay, to have a baby. So it means that uh, oxygen will heal whatever is happening in your body that is not allowing you to have a baby. So, um, of course, there is like many factors and each woman and each man, because also we need to consider that sometimes the... It's 50-50. Exactly, yes. So each woman and each man, they have different bodies and everybody uh, can um, have like a different outcome from the treatment. But all of them are coming with a medical condition already. So there is no overdo it, you know, like of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Oxygen can be toxic, but only if I leave you seven hours inside the chamber. Uh, it's something that I read that mm -hmm. um, is probably not related to the hyperbaric chamber in one part, but the other part, yes, that you just mentioned. So there is a study, there is a baby on the risings from after Ozempic use because Ozempic is... Um, uh, GLP-1 uh, agonist, which it develops insulin, which it pr processes food and fat and shoot glucose faster. This is not the proper technical terms. Vocabulary, yes. Mm -hmm. the, arg the, arg the, state, the statement and the argument is that there's an Ozempic baby on the rising because Ozempic is reducing inflammation due mm -hmm. to lack of not only the food, but like people are stopping uh, drinking or smoking. It's like a, almost like an anti anti addiction um, dr uh, medicine. So if you're saying that Ozempic, due to inflammation, is making people have babies, so you're saying that the biggest uh, to me the my biggest threat is inflammation. So I yes. know when I. Uh, when I feel inflamed, I can feel it in my body. I can feel it in my joints. I can. F I will be the one taking like a, a ibuprofen for breakfast and for dinner. And then if I take care of myself and I don't, f I take advantage, reduce the inflammation. I, my body is completely different. So, how? What is the impact on your hyperbaric chambers and inflammation? Mm -hmm. Well, look. I want to comment first in the osempic and the inflammation part. Right now. Like, I believe that 80% uh, of our diet is inflammatory, okay? We drink milk, we eat cheese, we eat yogurt. All that causes an inflammatory response in our body. Yeah. So if you redu reduce that because you are taking or, uh, or you are like consuming uh, the medicine, you know, like as Ozempic, it means that your body is detoxifying for all this crap, you know, that we put in our body. Yeah. Wow. Which means that you are creating a, very, a better environment, you know, for your body to be able to conceive. A body that is sick, that is inflammated, is not a healthy body. Where it's almost like we're so used to inflammation. That you don't feel it anymore. I don't know if it's that you don't feel it. It's like, it's kind of like we're idolizing to like sleepless night at work we're idolizing to like get home and be like tired and depleting mm -hmm. and depleted from work bragging about how much you work and like or don't have time to eat healthy and the or or, or life is driving us to take these decisions that keeps our body sick yeah. before Yes, before we maybe needed, we didn't need to work, you know, like this many hours on our phone, you know, or like be checking, you know, like I'm maybe have a coffee at 7 p.m. because I have a meeting with someone in the other side of the world at 3 a.m. 
So, you know, like the trend of our body of getting sick is on the rise. And more illnesses that are related to inflammation are showing, you know, in our body. Because what we eat as soon as we maybe wake up or a coffee, you know? Yes, a yogurt, you know, like, yeah, like, I like. Yeah, and just because it says, just because it says a zero fat, you think it's the, the healthy yogurt. Yeah, but like our body is not able to consume milk, you know? Like we cannot digest milk. I mean, I love butter, I love milk, and I lo it's just, it tastes delicious, it's great. But I, there was a time that I went on a study out of my, my mental health and my eating disorder and my depression that I was, I was feeling so much pain uh, that I would never believe anybody that would tell me that there is, they go through the day with no pain. I would find it impossible. Mm, like imagine. You, my doctor will ask me from one to 10, what do you feel pain? I will say 15. Like I would have ibuprofen in the morning, afternoon, at night. Like mm -hmm. I couldn't just, and then I decided to go just eat this. Like if something has a graphic design, I don't eat it. So I decided to eat like the way it comes from nature. And then I started eating the same thing every day. And when I got rid of milk, it's like after one month of getting rid of dairy, getting, your life like, changed. <laughs> like my body was used to digested and then I wanted to eat it again. And it was like, oh my God, like you feel like there was two things that happened, gluten and dairy, gluten in the United States. Like it's like if you're in Europe where like things are more fresh, it's kind of a little different. I don't know why, but it, it still affects me, but gluten or dairy. If I eat, I immediately feel it in my body. I feel it in my stomach. I feel it. And then, of course, now it's more about the way the milk is processed and what <laughs> happens to the cows. You have to basically uh, induce the pregnancy. Uh, yeah, no, all that horror just, history. Oh, yeah, I don't want to know anything else. <laughs> and now every time I eat dairy, like, I notice it and I feel it. And I know, like, I know exactly where it hurts. I know the joints that hurt because of inflammation. And, uh, and I know the fatigue. Mm -hmm. And basically, you just described myself when you were saying that you have to have a coffee because you have a meeting with the other mm -hmm. side of the world at 3 a.m. Because uh, my clients, like, uh, I have clients in San Francisco. I have clients in the U.S. that you, like, I have to have meetings at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and mm -hmm. I sleep really little. Like, I don't sleep that much. I mean, if I could sleep, like, one hour and you can tell me that I can just recover, I would just, like, be fascinated. Well... I have a patient. He came here in Ibiza to do sessions with us. He did five sessions and then he was like, I want one. Yes. He suffers of severe autism. He doesn't sleep and he goes in the chamber. So he sleeps one hour and then he can, he can start going like crazy, you that know, would like be my dream because I'm terrified. I don't know why, but I need to find out why my therapist, but I'm terrified to sleep. I don't know why mm -hmm. and I sleep four or five hours a day unless I went out and I drank a lot okay like, that would be the only reason for me to sleep a lot mm -hmm. unless it's like that one day of the week where I crash mm -hmm. and then it's like like I'm my brain is like yeah you're wired all the time yeah also you know what I notice when I use the chamber because I also sometimes, you know, I like feel a lot of stress with all the things that I do, you know, like I do, pay, I have patients, I have clients, customers, I have very demanding customers because, of course, if someone wants to buy a chamber that it is above the 100,000, they want like a super service, you know, so I also have like moments that I feel that I cannot sleep, that my mind cannot disconnect. And I can tell you that I go in the chamber and my best night recover is sleeping in there. Have like you, one have hour. You have you taken your phone to the chamber and work in the chamber? I fall asleep. I swear to God. Amazing. I have tried. I have tried, you know, like because I want to get things done and I need to focus. You know, I don't want any, any distraction, you know. I fall asleep. So then, <laughs> now, okay, so now you're touching a point that is really... It's really important because we, I was just talking about it. Uh, multi, it just keep coming up multiple times. So you're a woman. Mm -hmm. You run your business. Uh, do you have kids? No, I don't. Do you want to have kids at the moment? No. 
Okay, so mm -hmm. you don't want to have kids. Uh, well, not right now. Not right Maybe now. in two years. Maybe in three years. But and I, I, would, I would like to say something straight away. And I'm not afraid of, like, not having kids, you know, because I trust so much in my therapy that I'm not afraid of that. Okay, so you yes. wouldn't go for freezing your eggs because you trust your machine so much yes, that exactly. you don't have mm -hmm. an issue with that. Because yes. okay, when you have something that is relatively new and still consider vanity mm -hmm. like it's not a necessity or is there, is, is what it's what you mean relative new that is not scientific proof that it will work as if you will go and trust a doctor for um for fertility for example let's say for fertility let's mm -hmm. ju let's just keep it in fertility because you just mentioned this the fda has approved for 14 treatments yes so, but then if you go to other places we're talking about like privileged locations like america ibiza netherlands but if you go to mexico venezuela or well, panama surprisingly there is like uh hyperbaric chambers even in venezuela oh my god yes wow. because my dad uh, unfortunately, he died. He passed away, you know, like just a few months ago. Oh, but sorry. he da he had an stroke, and uh, that is a, a severe uh, stroke. And guess what I told him to do? Hyperventilate. Exactly. Yes. Half half of his face was like you know like a little frozen. yeah like frozen you know like and his body he was struggling struggling with mobility, and he did ten sessions recovered 72 years old especially at that age this is a clinic only of hyperbarics it's in la candelaria oh, so, you do? Uh, so there, it's not like somebody has one no. in their, their house yeah it's, oh, no, wow. it's a clinic okay. yes so the medicine or the or the industry that gives you pills is so strong that you cannot claim you cannot i cannot tell you i will cure your cancer with hyperbarics, yes, yes. Well, you know. I mean, even in the doctor, they will have to yes. ninety-nine percent. Exactly. Just because the hyperbaric oxygen therapy is not for, example, the treatment of cancer, I cannot recommend it to you as a doctor. Okay. That needs to be you, that on your own research, Decided decide to, to do it. Use it as a complementary. Exactly. Okay, so. Yes, you just formulated in the right way what I was trying to say, and thank you for that. So what I was trying to say is, since it's not something that a doctor can prescribe, mm -hmm. that it will cure you, and I know that this comes out of uh, insurance uh, liabilities. It doesn't come out, because what is the bounce back or the 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 reaction, the negative feedback or reaction or the, the things that you can get from the hyperbaric chamber that people are getting either upset or not believing in it. We are very used to that you take one pill and your headache is gone. Yeah. You know, so um, the thing with hyperbarics is that you need 20 sessions, 40 sessions, 60 sessions. So it means that you need to give me 60 days of your life. You know, it is a long treatment. So, um, yeah, if an antibiotic can do this for me in three days, why I'm going to go to the natural way? Because it's oxygen. We breathe oxygen every day. So this will be a natural way to heal, you know. And I tell you, look, your infection, your virus or your bacteria will be gone, but I need 20 days. Well, I mean, we all know the impact of pollution. Yes. So when the oxygen is cleaner... You also feel better. But it's also that, like, I don't want to do the work. I don't care if exactly. it works. This happens, you know, and I imagine that, you know, that the hyperbaric chamber that you have closest to you is an hour away. And then you need to drive one hour and then you need to stay one hour and a half inside the chamber and then drive one hour back. You're not going to do it. People come to me when it's the last when resource. The pill, the pill oh, my God, that's kind of mm -hmm. sad to have the fact that why do we have to wait until it's like until you are so sick you know that you cannot even deal with yourself you know and then what would be the difference in, in relation to to the hyperbaric chamber for i mean there's one thing about egg count and quality yeah. of egg or embryo and there's a difference between like your like endometriosis or cysts or your ovaries i would like to start with the egg quality okay so um, basically we are born with a quantity of eggs, okay? And imagine that it's a cup, and then we start using the ones on top, you know, when we are younger, and then the very, very end are left 
you know, when we are like 40. So, but those ones have been sitting there for a long, long time, okay? They're not receiving enough blood flow, oxygen, you know, so they are not as nice it's as hard. the one, yeah, exactly, they are not as nice as the one that were on top, okay, that are already gone from your body. So um, when these eggs, you know, that they are the last few that you have in your body, it starts going into your system, they are not as strong as the older ones, you know, because these are like old eggs, they are tired, yeah. you know. So by putting oxygen in your body, you can oxygenate your eggs, you oxygenate your uterus, you oxygenate the lining that covers your uterus. Like when you do hyperbaric oxygen therapy, you are creating a better environment for your eggs, for your body, and for you, for your new baby, you know, to be, to happen, you know. So um, there are some studies, some medical, me, uh, medical studies that say that by doing hyperbaric oxygen therapy from the second day of your cycle until like the seventh day, when they extract... Wait, the, how many days of cycle does people have? Five. Okay. Yeah, from the second day until the seventh, you know, like that's five, Good, you know. Uh, I, okay, I, so by doing it for those days, the quality has improved so much that the rate for doing IVF, uh, the, the successful rate, it is already like three of five will uh, go through a uh, um, uh, pregnancy. Oh my, like so yes. will go through like a successful embryo. Yes, exactly. The reason that I started doing this podcast is because I am not a woman and yeah. I would never understand. Like, I've noticed now that most women don't know their fertility. Yeah, no. mm -hmm. And... And also, as you said, it's something asymptomatic. You mm -hmm. don't know until you try. And also, eggs are like an onion. You don't really know until you like put it to work. Yeah. And to hear this is, I mean, it could give just a lot of hope to a lot of people because I have seen uh, patients have to go through three different cycles of IVF to get embryos to work. And you know the stress that that causes to your body? I don't. Because well, well, you know, like know. the stress that that causes, you know, like to the women. Imagine, you know, like having that all the time on your head. Oh, that like the, the only social pressure. Yes, that the only thing that a woman maybe, or well, I don't want to say that the only thing, but yes, your body is designed to be a mom. What well, you mean that you can't, you know? So I believe, you know, that for women, this, this the pressure that you put also on yourself is so it's so strong that i believe that even those eggs that you are putting to ivf are coming you know i also oh, believe a lot of an energy you yeah, know like, they are like charged you know also without the energy also it's, it's also the fact that but the, the fact is like men and this i know because we interviewed doctors and i didn't know what an andrology was until i interviewed an andrologist which is like the gynecologist of men the one that studied the sperm and the quality of fertility of a man, not the urologist, but the fertility of a man. And uh, if we have an issue, let's say uh, people that go it's like cyclists, mm -hmm. like they really harm their uh, egg making and their testicles. Yeah, the sperm, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, not egg, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the sperm. <laughs> the sperm. Party, you go out, you have stress, you go through chemotherapy or whatever, you wait three months. And then you have a whole new batch regenerated of sperm that you can go on a diet, you can cleanse, you can uh, like detox. Women well, don't have that. Also, we are the person that carries, you know, the baby. So we are a little bit more energy focused, you know. So being in a stressful environment for the women will be will be will will affect, you know, in in that length, you know, every every cell cells of our body, you know, including our eggs. But you know, there's something funny that you just said about the men. Um, yes, the sperm can be um, regenerated, but the food that the men consume, the alcohol, the uh, smoking, also the quality and the amount of sperm, sper uh, spermatozoids, you know, that a man carries, this diminishes. 
the difference is that there is a uh, social pressure because a man would never say, uh, I don't f know if I'm going to feel connected to my kid because I'm not carrying my kid, you know? Mm -hmm. Like in women, yeah. and that's when I say that there is a lack of education because if somebody tells you, oh, it's normal that you could get pregnant and you could not get pregnant, and if you don't get pregnant, there is alternative medical mm -hmm. uh, routes that you can take that will help you create a family. There's a there's a taboo of like feeling broken or feeling like if like, well, now that I did my career and classes and now I want to have kids now and I can't, I'm like, like it almost feels like everything else is forgotten and your only role is to be a mother mm -hmm. and you're not functioning as a woman yeah anymore yes yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah like unfortunate you know like the system is broken in that way you know because after after we did everything that the society believed that we needed to do go to college Mary have a yes work. Yeah, have a nice career, you know, like have the house, have the car, have this, you know, like, yeah, now you can have the family. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm 40. Sorry, you know, like, well, nobody told me this before, you know. And also, <laughs> or like, what if you don't want to have the family or what if you just want to be a mom or like, mm -hmm. a work, like, because I feel like there's so much guilt. There's so much guilt that women carry by yeah. other. I mean, I'm, I'm really proud to you have know? a Latin American woman in this podcast from Venezuela running an international business. Look, I would like to tell you, you know, like some like amazing facts about like doing hyperbarics in general, you know, for, for your body. You know, like not only in relation to um, uh, the the infertility or the fertility uh, programs, you know, that we can also offer. Um, for example, in the longevity area, in 2020, a Israeli doctor proved that you can reverse aging, okay, in your body on a cellular level. I'm sold. Yes. And I'm not saying also, you know, what happens to your skin, because that's the most, let's say, superficial part of your body. But imagine reverse the aging 25 years inside, inside your body. So it means that maybe you are not going to get Alzheimer, you know, when you're old, you know, oh because God. your cells regenerate it. So when you are 80 on a cellular level, maybe you are 70, 65, you know. So imagine that. Wow. Okay. Uh, so this doctor discovered that your telomeres that uh, is like basically a chromosome or cell that is very directed. Um, is that the, the one that gets shorter and shorter yes, when you age? Yes, exactly. So they start to reproduce or to length again. By Not only stops decreasing the quality, length, yes. but regenerates? Yes, exactly. That would be like the fountain of youth. Yes. But it was important for me to talk to you as a woman Mm -hmm. running a business as a woman uh which actually you probably are the second person that described the ovarian system mm -hmm. better than any all the doctors that i've had i probably had like one amazing doctor to describe it perfectly than you and uh, in a way that i can understand it yes I'm okay i'm not a doctor and i'm a guy it's not that we woke up one day without eggs you know so it's just the quality, basically, you know, like it's not the same, but we can improve that quality. And imagine, you know, if our chances to get pregnant is like 30% now, imagine that the, we can improve the egg quality by 10, 15%. I'm giving you already a lot of hope, oh you God, know. It's amazing. Well, everybody, yes. all of you know, if you're going through struggles to conceiving you know that this is a way for you to keep in mind to stimulate well anything reducing inflammation and i don't want to take much of your time because <laughs> i feel like i could be talking for ages with you yes. about this and uh, we will definitely have another podcast again and yes thank you so much this needs a lot of there's a hours lot, I mean, there's you know there is a lot of things to say and yeah. also the next podcast is going to be after i go and try it and then i yes. can tell you how mm. i felt exactly yes let's do that exactly thank but you so much amazing we will do that thank you you're welcome thank you for inviting me thank you guys for watching <laughs> ivf daddies 